welcome to my channel and or welcome back. I am Fire Lotus. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that bell, and a like. So today, I am going to specifically be talking about land spirits and why it is very important that you should start incorporating working with your own land spirits and what nature provides with you. So this originally, this idea in this video actually got sparked by a conversation that I'm having in the comment section of one of the videos. Basically, I made a video stating that some of these people that are saying, you know, Walmart shouldn't be selling this, shouldn't be selling that, shouldn't be selling that, um, are also the same people that are hyping up crystals within a 24-hour period and jacking the price up because, you know, I went out and got this one crystal. It's completely changed my life, so I'm going to talk about it so everybody else can do the exact same thing, only to realize that that's not really how crystals work. Um, I have a huge crystal collection. If you would like to see my crystal collection, uh, let me know in the comments of this video, and I'll make a video showing off all of them. Um, I used to, I've collected them. I worked at a metaphysical store. I used to do a lot of the Etsy um, mystery boxes of crystals. Basically, it's just like for one flat rate price, you get a certain amount uh, weight-wise of crystals, and they're sent to you. I preferably like crystals in the raw form versus like being sanded down and you know smoothed out. Anyways, but yeah, if you'd like, if you would like to see a video on that, let me know in the comments. Um, I've even worked with Moldavite for the past four years, and yeah, it's it's a great crystal or it's a great tektite, um, but it's not radically going to change your life in a matter of 24 hours. Anyways, back to what I was saying. And the comment was basically, just imagine when they find out how powerful the dirt is beneath their feet versus a crystal. And they're right. Now, this is also very interesting and exciting for me because, um, on one of my episodes on my podcast that I do, Fire Lotus the Witch, you can find that on Anchor, Spotify, um, most, uh, Applecast and most other platforms. But it's the episode where I believe it was Journey Through the Woods with the Traditional Witch. Me and my friend, my good friend, um, well, my friend Brian, uh, who's a traditional witch, we started talking, and I theorized kind of that the old god, or the person in traditional folk magic, or traditional witchcraft, um, or the crooked path, is portrayed as the witch father and the witch mother. Basically, both aspects of masculine and feminine energy, but also they represent, um, because there are two sides to both of them, so they represent the changing of the seasons. And he originally was Wicca, just like most of us in my generation came from. Um, and he was very drawn to Pan, and then he had a shift where he discovered the crooked path and traditional witchcraft. And I theorized, what if... The witch father originally helped with Wicca, birth Wicca, to kind of bring it back and forth front. Because this is not the first time that folk magic or traditional magic has been trending. And we're seeing another huge resurgence. Specifically thanks to, shout out to all of you, um, all the Appalachia practitioners or Ozark practitioners that have been producing great, great books um, Jake Richards, Backwood Witchcraft, amazing book. Both of his, one and two, are amazing books. Um, we have Southern Cunning, we have Their Crooked Path, and then we also have, uh, New World Witchery, uh, A Trove of North American Folk Magic by Corey Thomas Hutchinson. He also has a podcast by the same name, uh, New World Witchery. And it's so true that people are not using one of the most powerful things y'all possibly have in your craft, which is your land. Also with those books, you will also come across a term called bioregionalism. I've made a video on it before, but if you don't know it, bioregionalism is the study of the nature and wildlife around your specific area that you're living in. And you do this for about a year. You just kind of do some research on like what's normal and what's abnormal. Um, and it'll also, that helps with so many other things in your craft. If you would like me to do a newer video on that, let me know in the comments as well. Um, and I also have some items right here that I'm going to show you of how you can use your land. Now, for one, working with your land spirits, it is not going to be like working with the deity. You're not going to be able to go out, buy a candle, light it, and then automatically start working with them. Kind of. Uh, from my experience of working with different types of land spirits, is it depends on what that land spirit, their personality is. Um, some will be very eager to work with you. Others will, you're going to have to go through like step, a step, a step of gaining the trust and respect of that nature spirit um, or land spirit. Now, I work with multiple ones out here, and I suggest when, in, even if you work or live in an apartment 
even in the city, it doesn't matter. There are land spirits everywhere. Um, and with working with them, I suggest, depending on where you live, uh, there I know there are some places in the United States and other parts of the world where you're not supposed to leave food out because it could attract animals. So do your research on that. Um, and then give an offering. Just walk outside. When I move to every property, I make it a point to basically say, hey, this is who I am. I'm Fire Lotus. Um, I am a practitioner. I'm not really going to change anything on your property. You know, I'm not here to destroy anything, disrupt anything, but I just wanted to introduce myself. I will be doing magic and so forth and so on. That's number one of gaining that respect. Number two, um, if you can add some flowers and stuff, but basically you were just going to give an offering. I work with trees, specifically oak trees. We have three century oaks next to our, um, they're either century oaks or water oaks, um, lined up in a cool little triangle shape, um, right next to my house. And I work with specifically one of those. Now, if you actually scroll back in my videos and you find the video where our house was hit by a storm, you'll actually understand why that's so important. Um, but anyways, just give offerings, and you'll know it. Um, it's kind of just going to be like sensing a deity or something like that. But please, please, please remember, you have to respect the hell out of them. Now, there's another tidbit that I wanted to throw out there. If you live anywhere in the United States or in Canada or any other part that has natives or indigenous people, um, specifically when burning dragon's blood, watch it. Um, dragon's blood can be very harsh because it's a very strong, potent, potent herb. Um, or resin, and burning that around a very, very heavy presence of native spirits could kind of, yeah, uh, it could irritate them a little bit. So if you do burn dragon's blood, burn something sweet like sweet grass or even tobacco right after that. Um, a lot of people, when you hear them term, when you hear the term tobacco, they are talking about loose leaf tobacco. Um, but in my practice, I actually have this candle, um, this candle holder that actually has a spike on it. And as I'm watching it, because, you know, fire safety, I will actually light a full cigarette and pop it on there. And me and it's shocked my partner because it's actually burned down like somebody's smoking it. Um, you can use store-bought cigarettes. It That right there, honestly, it just depends on your personal preference. You can also just use um, loose-leaf tobacco. You can get, like, a bag for, like, 10 bucks, depending on where you're at. Um, you can burn that. Also make tobacco water. Multiple uses for tobacco water. Um, but specifically, working with your land spirits is extremely powerful. For one, there's something that's called, I call it bio, um, biolocation, basically tapping into the energy of that dirt. So you know how in folk magic and other practices, dirt or dust is a very, very proper thing to use. Um, as I did my interview, when I interviewed Bloody Mary from New Orleans, shout out to you, hello, um... We actually talked about that because my my ultimate goal is to be able to somehow get dirt, tiny like a tiny jar of dirt from every major um, old temple or old historical site. My brain is not working with me, but like the temp, um, the pyramids, um, Stonehenge. Um, all the places around the world like that. Um, there are like multiple things in my head, but my mouth's not working right. Um, but collecting those dirts and then combining them. Now you're probably looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? The next time, if you do not live near Crossroads and you work with Crossroads, respectfully collect some of that dirt and bring it back to your altar. That way you can literally bring that sacred space's energy into your home. You bring the Crossroads to your house. Um, but in the interview with Bloody Mary, she actually has an entire altar specifically for dirts and sand from all over the world. Now imagine if you could get literally a jar of dirt from every region of the Appalachian Ozark mountain range, right? And then you bring it home and connect to that. You are connecting to all the land spirits. Interesting fact with this, I blew my partner's mind with this. We recently discovered in the past, I will, I'll say five years, um, that all the trees and bushes and plants are all connected by a specific type of fungi. This specific type of fungi basically connects all of the trees and bushes and stuff, all their root systems, it, it connects them. Not only does it connect them, but it can actually communicate. It can redirect certain nutrients to go to one tree versus all the other ones. It can talk to each other and tell each other, hey, this tree is sick. Hey, that tree's sick. Hey, this tree needs more light. And the fungi itself will redirect them. So everything is 100% connected. Um, another example of this, my house. 
I have my wards and protection set up to any spirit that is a wandering spirit. As long as it does not have any malice or anything like that intent, it can randomly come in my home and just chill here. And it happens a lot. But in the process of that, I've gained and been able to interact with so many land spirits. The very first time that I casted a circle here, it was me, my partner, and three other people. And um, my there's our house is covered with tree lines, I mean with trees, so we're like in this little nook. But uh, further on down the property, closer to the lake, it's not, which is where I have my circle. And there was a fire in the middle of the circle. I just casted it, and we all looked up, and we saw an orb about this big, solid, it was not see-through, it was solid, it was about that big, and it literally flew out of the tree line, kind of did this like little fairy zigzag thing that like Tinkerbell would do, and then it faded back into the trees. But it wasn't a drone, it was nothing that could personally create it. What's interesting about this is this is the second time that I've seen something like this on a property that I practice on. Those are those land spirits. Now, you're probably asking, well, how do I tap into this? For one, bones. Bones, bones, bones. You can use bones for multiple reasons. Bird feathers, you can use those. Send messages, send dreams. Um, again, bones, you can read them. You know how everybody's like, oh my god, all these crystals. If you live in an apartment or a house that has, um, not sandstone. If you have sheetrock in your house, if your walls are made of sheetrock, they have quartz crystals in it. Multiple other things. Okay, uh, I believe selenite as well. It has little bitty pieces of selenite. Uh, concrete. It's made of different types of crystals in just raw, raw forms, right? This is a tiny stone that I found while walking to check my mail. I've used this more than I've used crystals that I have. Another thing, if you're in a southern region, you would know of pokeberry root or pokeberry. It's a, um, it's poisonous. Some people can eat it, um, at the early, early stages of growth, but do your own research on that. Do not digest it. The berries, though, it will stain the hell out of anything, including your skin, but it can also be used. It's extremely toxic, so no children. Do not ingest it and keep it away from your animals, but it can be used to make an ink out of it, an herbal ink. Um... But with that, we have a lot of it here, and most people would cut it down or dig it up so it will just, you know, go away and never grow back. I, on the other hand, have been keeping them growing, and you want me to tell you why? This is something that I made. Now, this right here was given to me, and I kind of repurposed it, and I made this out of polymer clay that I got at Dollar General, listen up, and then I mixed ashes from my sage and other sacred herbs that I burn. By the way, the sage, it's not... Anything from California or anything like that, it's culinary sage. I buy it in the grocery store, and I basically wrap it and, you know. Anyways, I wanted to make that clear. Uh, culinary sage is what I burn, or I burn powder sage from Dollar Tree. Um, but anyways, this right here is poke root. If you dig these up and dry them out, you can use your oven. I've done it before, too, um, depending on how thick they are. Basically, you're going to cut your oven at a very, very low level, like 100. Um, one of the lowest levels they can possibly get. Put them on a baking sheet and basically just bake them for probably about two to three hours, if not a little bit longer. Um, it does have a weird smell. I kind of like it, but you, your house will smell like it. Or... The other option that I did was just throw it outside and leave it out in the heat for like four or five months and dries it out. But pokeberry roots are used and can be used in the craft as protection. They can also be dried out and hollowed out and made little necklaces out of. Um, but yeah, and then this. If you know, you know, you know, you know. This right here. Um, in Conjure, specifically in Conjure, if you look at a lot of people when they do research on herbs, right? They automatically go kind of westernized or European-wise, right? Sage, rosemary. Start looking, don't practice, but start looking into other practices, herbs, and the names of those herbs that they use. A lot of herbs that are found in conjure or southern conjure are basically growing in either a nature or growing in cities where they have all the plants and stuff to look pretty. Most of those are used in conjure. It just has a little nickname to it, which most herbs do. But working with your land spirits, it will take a little time to kind of build that up, but you have so much more that you can benefit from. What I mean by this is you can also help them once you build that relationship. Respect, respect is key, but once you build that relationship, you can also help them protect your house. 
Um, there are so many other things that you can gain from working with your land spirits, especially if you're a gardener, if you have farm lives or bees or chickens, they can also assist in those things. Um, now, another thing that I also wanted to talk about on this, I'm pro I promise you I'm only going to make this like 20 minutes long. Um, another thing that I also wanted to address is there's this newer concept that's kind of snuck its way in where... If you work with one deity, you can only work with that deity and that's it. That's bullshit. Um, with me, I primarily work with my spirit guides, the land spirits, and my ancestors for the past three years now. Um, but depending on what spells or workings I'm doing, I will call upon or ask specific deities or you know gods or goddesses to assist me in this magic. And sometimes they will, and other times they won't, that's okay too. And then after I do that, I will look up some type of um, offering that I can give, and then I'll go outside and give an offering. Another thing, if you do not um, keep a compost or recycle your food, uh, every time you get through with something like, you know, pills and stuff like that, as long as it's safe for animals, you don't want to poison the neighborhood animals, um, go back outside and have a spot where you put it at, right, and throw it, and say, thank you, you know, I'm returning you back to the earth by which you came it's kind of that cycle i have a pumpkin over here named sprout that i got from my father-in-law's house um i've had him for almost half a year now i believe um and i'm actually going to keep him until he gets to the point where i throw him out and hopefully we'll have pumpkins in my little misfit garden if y'all would like an update on my misfit garden and all my plants that i have let me know too and i'll make a video um i'm getting back into this as well now i did want to also say a couple updates really quick um i do have a discord now if anybody's interested click the link tree that will be posted with this video um i do have a new youtube page but it has nothing to do with witchcraft um so if you're interested in that i'll be adding it to my link tree um it's another latest another lotus that is part of the lotus family uh, but yeah, I have a Discord, I have both of my uh, TikToks, my Instagram, I have a Snapchat now if y'all would like that, um, and then my Facebook page, two TikToks, and my podcast. Now, the things that are going to be coming soon, hopefully, I am uh, talking to a couple of people to hopefully set up some interviews, so that's going to be exciting. Um, I also have Zoom now, so I may try to actually do a couple of interviews live and then record it on here. If y'all would like that, let me know in the comments. Also, hello to all my new Lotuses. Welcome to Lotus Hollow, and welcome to the Lotus family. If y'all ever have any questions, drop them in the comments, or hit me up on one of my socials, and I will direct message you, or you can email me. My email is firelotusthewitch at gmail.com. If you have any questions whatsoever, or if you would like me to do a specific video, contact me in one of those ways, and I will definitely get on that. Um... I also wanted to let everybody know that I will be doing a community candle very soon again, and I will also be within the next, probably around the full moon, I will be doing another uh, sweetening jar. If you would like more information on that, check out my Facebook page. I'll be making a post on that today or a little bit later on today as well. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, if you like learning about spirituality and witchcraft and everything that comes in between, like, subscribe, send this to one of your friends. Um, let me know in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let's have a conversation. Not an argument, but a conversation. But yes, until then, um, I will be doing another book review as well very soon. I have a lot of books to work through. Um, I do have an Amazon list on my um, in my link tree of all the books that I personally own that's in my collection. You should totally check that out as well. Um, and yeah, also I wanted to ask, would y'all be interested if I were to do a um, video on Oracle readings? Um, like a general pull for the month? Something I want to try. I don't know. I'm an intuitive reader, so I think it would be interesting. But yeah, if y'all like to see anything else or if y'all have any suggestions, drop it in the comments below. And as always, thank y'all so, so much. And I hope y'all are all having an amazing, magical day. Remember, you are loved. You are wanted. Always do research. Never use Google. Use DuckDuckGo or any other alternative web browser. And until next time, I will see y'all later.